Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Today's video is part two on a series of how I created this Edwardian inspired blouse from a self-drafted pattern, which I mocked up to fit me. And today I'll be going over and showing you guys exactly how I sewed it from start to finish. This blouse in includes a lot of interesting details like lace insertion, which I'd actually never done before, and pin tucks and these balloon sleeves and cuffs. I really love this type of shirt. I think it's a perfect history bounding item to have in your wardrobe because it's so applicable to a modern wardrobe. You can wear this tucked in like I am with a skirt or you could wear it untucked. You could wear it with a skirt or with jeans tucked in or out and I think it would look really good with jeans. And it's just, it's also really in fashion. I think Edwardian things are really in fashion now with the general world as well so i just think it's a perfect item to have in your wardrobe so if you're interested in seeing how i sewed it along with the mistakes and pitfalls i encountered along the way then stick around Okay, so here are all my pattern pieces cut out in my white linen fabric. There's the bodice pieces, the sleeve pieces, which I actually cut out in two pieces per sleeve just to save on fabric. And then here are my cuff pieces and there's two layers per cuff. And then this is the insertion lace that I'm going to use for the insertion lace as well as the lace collar. So here's one of my center back pieces of the bodice and I'm starting by just folding in that um, button allowance and I'm adding in an extra strip of fabric to make it stronger because this is where the buttons and the buttonholes are going to be. Okay, so now I am just pinning on my insertion lace according to those tabs that I marked on the pattern as to where each strip will go. So there's going to be three strips per center back piece and five strips on the front bodice piece. So here's the front piece now. I started off with three because I forgot that my pattern had markings for five strips of lace. And I'm going ahead and sewing those things down. So here's the button allowance at the center back. And now I'm just stitching down on the very edges of the insertion lace strips. At this point, I hadn't yet decided how I would go about finishing the edges of the insertion lace, but we'll see how I do that in a few moments. So here's one of the center back pieces. Okay, so here's my front bodice piece now with the strips of lace all sewn on. And yeah, I realized that I could actually add two more strips of lace in those spaces. Okay, and so here I've added the extra strips of lace, making there five. And so this is the kind of scary part of insertion lace where you actually cut open the fabric that's underneath each strip of lace. Thank you. 
Okay, and now those edges have been pressed open and I had to decide which mode of finishing these edges I would use and I opted for the easiest and least bulky approach which is simply leaving the edges raw and sewing another seam right along that folded edge and then I will be trimming off the edge as close to those stitches as possible. And if you want to see how this method of seam finishing um, worked out for me, then check out the blog post. So now I'm just trimming off those edges as close to that seam as possible. Okay, so now all the insertion lace is finished. And now it's time to start adding the tucks in between all those strips of insertion lace. Hi guys, before I go to the sewing machine, I wanted to show you the approach I'm using to sew the pin tucks in this shirt. First of all, I am going to be sewing pin tucks and what I drafted into the pattern was more like regular tucks, but I decided I'm just going to do double the amount of tucks at half the width that I'd planned in the pattern. So it will still end up being the same size, but the tucks will be smaller. And I'm not drawing on my tucks or anything. It would probably be better if I was, but I just don't feel like it. So. I'm ironing out a crease where each tuck is going to be and then I'm going to sew these down and then I'll go in and I'll, I'll iron down the next tuck next to that one that I just sewed and then sew that until I have all the tucks and I'm planning on having three tucks in each of these spaces so they're going to have to be pretty narrow but I think it'll look nice. Okay, so now I'm at the sewing machine and I'm just sewing down the first tucks. So what I did was I ironed down one tuck next to each strip of lace, sewed that down and then I would go to the ironing board again and iron down the second tuck in each, in each you know, space between the strips of lace. And that was how I did it without having to make any markings on my fabric or use a ruler or anything like that. Okay, and here is what I did for the bust dart thing. I just made an extra tuck and I ended it a little short. And I'm working on my lace collar, so you can see I pressed these strips of lace to be curved and then I sewed them together overlapping a little bit. And now I'm just starting to pin together the actual bodice pieces. Here's a side seam. So I actually realized that um, if you'll watch my part one, I did add extra width to the bodice pattern, but I added a little too much width, especially at the bottom. It flared out a little too much at the bottom. So I just pinned that side seam a little closer. And here are the sleeve pieces. I cut them in two just to save on fabric because they're so long and, and wide. So I'm just starting off by sewing down that center sleeve seam. It's all pinned. And so for this project, I decided to use flat felled seams. 
Um, I just liked the look of the flat felled seams in combination with the lacy blouse. So now I'm sewing the whole bodice together. off extra seam allowance and trimming down the bottom edge was quite messy here okay so now I'm just going in for the second pass of the flat felled seams doesn't look like I used any pins which is my style. <laughs> and there we go. Again, I really like the look of the flat filled seams with the feminine lacy blouse. Okay, so now I'm just pinning the sleeve inside the bodice and pulling up on the gathering stitches on the sleeve to make it fit. This bodice actually had a bit of a dropped shoulder as well. And there we go. The first pass is done. So now I'm just trimming down the seam allowance to flat fell the sleeve seam. And here we go, flat felling the sleeve seam at the machine now. Okay guys, the next step is to sew on the lace collar, but I don't know how I'm going to do it. Um, my main uncertainty is I don't know how I'm going to finish that seam. Um, I certainly could use bias tape, but I don't think I even have enough linen left to make my bias tape, and if I did, I wouldn't want to make some right now. <laughs> so I think I might try flat felling this seam. Which I don't know though, because I'm a little sad. I think it would be nice to have this lace edging. Like, in other words, to just have the lace sitting on top of the shirt when it's sewn on. But I, don't, I just don't know how I'd finish that seam. I mean, I guess I could always like turn this down first and then sew the lace on like that. That might work. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so at this point, I am trimming down the neckline a bit, experimenting with how I'm going to finish that seam. And here's where I made my big mistake. I don't exactly remember what my thinking was, but I trimmed off a whole bunch from this neckline. Okay, I have another big problem with the collar. First of all, I shouldn't have just cut off the entire seam allowance. That was really stupid because obviously there does need to be some overlap when I sew the actual collar on. So that kind of stinks. And weirdly enough, the collar is actually too short to reach all the way around to the back. And, and the neckline just turned out like bigger than I expected, meaning the collar like flops over. It was supposed to be much closer fitting to the neck. So I might have to ditch the collar idea. <laughs> okay, so this was plan B as to how I would finish the neckline. I just decided to edge it with a piece of, of lace, the same lace that I used for the rest of the blouse. And I used it much like you would use bias tape, just folding it over the raw edge. 
So that way I still got a little bit of lace detailing in there. And that's what the neckline looks like when it's finished. I do like how it turned out for a plan B. Okay, so now it's time to work on the cuffs. And you can see that I added an extra strip of fabric on the inside that I basted in place just as interfacing. And so to add the cuff, of course, I'll need to add a slit to the bottom of the sleeves. And this is how I'm finishing those slits with bias tape. So I sew the first pass by machine and then I sew down the other side by hand. And that's what it looks like when it's finished. So now I'm adding a hand gathering stitch to the bottom of the sleeve to gather it up in order to fit onto the cuff. I'm just going in now, sewing that onto the cuff by machine. Okay, so something went wrong here. I think what happened was I forgot that more gathering is supposed to take place on the outside of the sleeve than the inside. So I'm just redoing that now. That's actually how the sleeve pattern was drafted, if you look at my part one. And so I'm just trimming off the bulky seam allowance here. And now I'm sewing around the other edges of the cuff, wrong sides out, trimming down the seam allowance. And then turning it right side out. And there we go. And then I'm just sewing down the remaining side by hand. And that's what it looks like when it's finished. Okay, so now I have to figure out how I'm gonna finish this raw edge at the bottom. Usually, of course, I would just do a rolled hem, but because of all the lace insertion and the tucks, that would be very stiff and bulky. So I decided to finish it in a similar way to how I did the top by using a strip of lace. So now it's pinned in place. So I actually, on the bottom, I actually use the lace to face the edge as opposed to the way I did the neckline where I folded it around the edge. Here we go, so now I'm just stitching it down on the inside of the blouse. 
Okay, so the final step now is adding the buttons and the buttonholes to the center back. So I'm just marking the placement of the buttons relatively by eye. I never really mark them on my patterns. I just find it too problematic to transfer the markings to the actual fabric and the markings always go away by the end anyway, so. And now I'm just hand stitching the buttonholes. Okay guys, I'm back with the finished blouse and I'd like to just back up here so I can give you a view of the finished blouse. Here's the front. Here, oh, well here's um, the sleeves, the nice balloon sleeves with the cuffs. Here's a side view. Here's the back with all those buttons. And the other side. And again, I really love this blouse because it's so versatile. I could wear it tucked in, I could wear it tucked out because I made it a nice length. It's about here when I untuck it. So it's a good length to wear untucked as well. And you could wear it with so many different, you know, bottom skirts or pants or jeans or whatever. It's really versatile and I'm very happy with how it turned out. The only thing that went that didn't go according to plan, of course, was the collar. I was planning on having one of those traditional Edwardian like lace standing collars that go pretty tightly around the neck, but it just didn't work out due to a series of unfortunate errors on my part. And I'm happy with it. I'm very happy with the neck. And I think this style of neck is at least a good introduction into Edwardian styles because it's, it's just more basic, obviously. But yeah, I love this blouse. If you guys enjoyed this video and this video series, then please give it a like, leave your comments and questions below. Check out part one if you haven't already where I go over how to, I created this pattern and fit the mock-up. And check out the accompanying blog post, which will be linked in the, in the description where I will give even more details about the making process. Okay guys, thanks for watching, bye.